Hello, welcome back to Rust 101. This is video 40. We have reached the second half of life um, in terms of episodes of Rust 101. Uh, well done uh, if you made it this far, or if this is your first one, welcome. Um, we are doing exercises to help us understand how to write async Rust. Um, we've done a couple of exercises called 1A and 1B. We're on to exercise 2, where we're going to write a chat app. Um, uh, which basically just listens on a TCP port um, and can send messages from clients to servers. So uh, clients send in a message and the server sends it out to everyone in the room. That's the thing. Um, the irony of this is that my day job is working on Matrix, so it's kind of the same thing as this, um, but I'm going to be surprisingly terrible at it anyway. Um, anyway, so uh, the first part of it is... Uh, exercise 2a, which is writing the server part of it. Um, and I had a bit of a poke around the code before this, so I didn't look too dumb um, when I was doing this exercise because it, it looked complicated. Um, so full disclosure, if I feel if it feels like I pick this up quickly, it's because I've already looked at it. It's not because I'm some kind of genius. Um, yeah, okay. So basically, we're going to be looking at the server code today. So there's there's one extra bit of library code, which is just a very simple message class. Most of the code's in server, which we'll look at in a second. And um, what server does is it starts listening for TCP connections, so that's just internet connections. Um, and uh, when a connection comes in, um, it does... Let me get this right. Yeah, when it, I'm pretty sure when someone, let's just double check that. When someone connects, I'm going to explain this stuff properly, but I just want to try and get my initial spiel right. Yeah, 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 okay. So when, when someone, when a client connects to the server, so we're writing the server, so that's the, the thing that coordinates the people. Um, client, uh, individual people will be on clients and they'll connect. When they connect, um, We've got like incoming messages and outgoing messages. So it kind of splits those apart and puts them into two different um, tasks that are running. One called handle incoming, one called handle outgoing, which is pretty straightforward, right? Handle incoming uh, is deals with uh, messages that are coming in, obviously. And that will be, it will be talking to one client at that point. Um, so that client will say their name and then they'll start saying, um, uh, like things. And so we understand their name. And then whenever they say something, we send it via handle outgoing. Um, we send it out to all the other. No, that's not right. Well, think about that later. Yeah, I think, yeah, okay. We'll think about exactly how it works. But yeah, that every, every time you send a message, that message should get sent out to everyone, um, who's listening. Okay, so there's some to-dos in the code. Um, we'll look at the code, try and figure out, get our heads around it. Uh, we'll start the server by running this command. Okay, so uh, let's have a look at the code. Well, so let's start with the library code. So it's really simple. It's just a message enum, which is either someone's username or um, it is a message from someone from so that came from a client saying, Please give this to all the other people. Or it's a message going out to all the clients, which is what this chat one is. So that one has to say which user said it and what they said. This is just a string saying, um, that, that I want to say this. And this is just a string saying, I, I am this person. All right. So um, the structure of the code looks like we've got a main method, which returns uh, result, which we're not going to worry about, but what it basically does is it binds to port 8000 on our local machine, um, and then it creates a broadcast channel. So a broadcast channel, uh, I'm guessing, is something which means, which has one transmitter, um, and then it can send to lots of different people. Seems right. Yeah. So basically, you um, when 
when you send a message in, oh no, does it mean it's many to many? I think it might be many to many. Does that make sense? Yeah, multi producer, multi consumer channel. Okay. Uh, right, that makes sense, right? They, like, so essentially what we're doing here is, well, this is all, this is a channel like within our application. Um, um, but it's doing, it's kind of doing the job of distributing messages around to multiple, um, uh, clients who are connecting. So, um, what we do is when, when a TCP connection comes in, um, as this accept thing basically returns whenever someone connects to us, it gives us back a stream. So now we've got a stream. We split that stream, which is currently, the streams are able to like read and write, but because we're going to break those up into two different things, we call this into split thing, which basically splits it up into a reading, something that can read from the stream and something that can write to the stream. And we print out connection established, and then we we spawn two asynchronous tasks. So these are going to be running in the background, a bit like threads. Uh, the first one is for incoming messages. So it's got the TCP read, so it takes ownership of this TCP read. Um, like stuff coming into us over the TCP connection. And it also clones the transmitter so that it can um, send out things that need to be sent to all the clients. Uh, and it also, so that, so now we've made a handle incoming and it does, so it does this handle incoming, which we'll look at in a second, basically to deal with any information that comes in on that TCP. Uh, stream. And then we do a very similar thing for outgoing. We, we launch this, uh, task, which handles any outgoing messages just to this connection. Uh, so it needs the TCP right to be able to do that. And it, it, it has a receiver, which means that anytime anyone transmits on one of these clones of transmitter, um, this receiver and all the other receivers will receive it. Um, the reason there's more than one of these is because more than one person might connect to this TCP listener. So this code will happen multiple times because it's in a loop and none of it's blocking, right? It's spawn. These spawns don't block. They send off this async task to happen somewhere in the background. We don't care where. Um, so both of them get, get just immediately created and left running in the background. And then the loop comes back around again, ready to accept another TCP connection. And when that second TCP connection comes in, it spawns another incoming, another outgoing. And they've both got another TX, a clone of TX, and another receiver um, subscribed. So now you've got this kind of many-to-many -many network of uh, how many clients are connected. Each of them has a transmitter and a receiver, so they can um, they can cause messages to be sent out to everyone, and they can receive those messages. And they also have like a, a TCP read and a TCP write for hearing what the client's saying to me and saying stuff to the client. All right, so. Um, hopefully this is going to become a bit clearer when we actually run the thing and send some messages around. So we have this handle incoming, so that's for dealing with um, messages that someone, a client, sent. Uh, and we have handle outgoing. So let's look at handle incoming first. So it takes in the TCP read, as we saw, and it also takes this transmitter so it can send stuff out to the other um, tasks. And it... Uh, reads in line by line. So this dot lines means um, give me give me these things as an iterator, one each line of input that I get is the next uh, thing. Um, and we read in the, this is misspelled, well, this should be initial message. Um, we read in the first line. So the first line we get from the client should be just then their username. So we're going to deserialize it and check whether it is a username message. And if it is, we're fine. If not, we're going to just bail out immediately. And then from then on, we're going to deserialize the line. Um, if it's a user, we'll just send it to everyone else. Not sure why. Um, if it's a client message, so something that this person said, convert it into something that's suitable to send to everyone. By combining it with the username, which we picked up here, and then and then send it out with transmitter. And if it's a if it's a chat message, then this kind of comes to the wrong place. Like it shouldn't this shouldn't happen, right? Like um, that it's intended uh, it's intended for a client. This chat message. Let me remind you what a chat message is. So a chat message is the username and the thing they said. 
that's intended for a client, the server shouldn't be getting it, I don't think. So it might, it might even be an error of this, or it might be that somehow we get one of those and we just ignore it. Okay, um, so that's what ha happens when stuff comes in. And then when stuff gets sent over this broadcaster, so this will be when we sent it using this transmitter, then this is how we send stuff out to the the stream that, that is connected to the client, that's TCP write. Um, and so what we do is we just convert this. So this is code Dave Kiffner's. We convert this receiver from a receiver into a broadcast stream. And I looked this up a minute ago, and that is basically um, a stream which lets us, um, which lets us pull stuff out of the receiver. So it's very much, very similar to if we just said rx dot, um, like receive every time, but now it's a stream. So we can do this dot next and make it like a, a, a nice, slightly nicer looking loop. And all we do with this is turn the message into JSON and send it out over that TCP stream. So if we, re we've received something over RX, and we send it to TCP, right? So that should be pretty straightforward. Um, I'm just wondering what's the most simple way to kind of check that we've got something working. I think the easiest thing to do would be to get some kind of handle outgoing code working. Um, it's going to be awfully hard to unit test this. Um, I would probably need to mock my stream, my TCP stream to do it. So, um, in a shocking turn of events, I'm not going to write unit tests for this, but I'm going to be trying it out as we go. Obviously, if I was doing this as production code, I would be writing unit tests instead of just trying it out. Um, and I would be making the effort to, um, to refactor this code so that it can handle. And really, it's just that this thing, we'd need some kind of, um, writer instead of, oh yeah, it's an, it's an async write, I think. So we could just take an async write here. I almost wonder whether we could write a unit test for this. <sighs> Shall we try quick? Should we try quick? Okay. I'm feeling saucy. Right. So let's say, um, config test mod tests. So first thing is just going to be, um, Uh, it's going to, it's a test of handle outgoing, isn't it? So it's going to be, um, broadcast when, when we broadcast a chat message, it is written to stream something like that and then we're just gonna we're gonna be calling handle outgoing i think we don't need any um tasks here we can do this all with just i mean it's async right so it's already a little bit so now i think we need async test now what's it called i think it's called tokyo test maybe Let's see if that is a thing. Um, let's just make this empty in case I'm breaking it somewhere that way. Okay, so it seems like Tokyo test is a thing. We're going to call handle outgoing. Um, and we're going to give it some stuff. We're going to give it a TCP write. So let's just refactor this. So instead of it taking in an owned right half, which I'm pretty sure is an async right. We're instead going to let it take a W, which is an async right, like so, with a comma. Um, we'll bring in async right, and then we just need to double check. Okay, well, it's going to be meetable later. So, does the compiler, is the compiler okay with us calling handle outgoing, passing in TCP write? Yes, it is. It seems like the compiler's okay with that. So, I was right to guess that this is indeed an owned write half. An, an, an owned write half is indeed an async write. So, we're allowed to do this. 
So now let's make ourselves another writer. In this case, um, what implements async write? I mean, maybe does vec implement async write? That's not how you spell vec. Um, so let's let TCP. Oh, let's not call it TCP write. That's really confusing. Let's call it write. Okay, it seems like maybe it does because the compiler's not complaining. It's just complaining we haven't got a receiver. So that's okay. Receiver should be a broadcast receiver. So we can make ourselves one similar to how um, we do it here. Let's do it the same way exactly, shall we? Um, like so. So we're going to make ourselves a transmitter. And then we're going to make ourselves a receiver just to be exactly the same as um, what we did above. Bring in broadcast. Spell let correctly. Now, we are almost there. Let's unwrap this um, by saying, let's just unwrap. I think it's easy enough to figure out what went wrong if it did. And then we need an assertion, don't we? So we're going to assert that something got written into write. Um, so I guess we're going to say, we'll turn it into a string maybe. Yeah, let's turn it into a string of UTF-8. And let's just say that it's an empty string for now, just to check the compiler's okay with us. We need to unwrap that. Ah, oh, it already got moved in here. Okay, we want then to pass in a reference to it, or a mutable reference to it. I'm not sure whether this is going to work, but we'll see. Is a ref is a mutable reference to a vec also async write? Seems like it is. Okay, so that's fine. Yeah, so what happened there was this, this type here needs to be something that implements async write. Um, I was passing in a vec, which you can write to, but it seems you can also write, which makes sense, you can also write to a mutable reference to a vec. Okay, and then we're saying that it should, um, well, we haven't actually sent anything, so let's transmit something. So, send. And now what gets sent down this channel is a message. So, let's send a message. Um, let's send a user, just for sake of argument. And let's call that user Alice. Now, this should write out something along the lines of... Oh, hang on, we better wrap this up a bit. It's going to send us something along the lines of user colon Alice. Or I'm not sure what it's going to look like, the JSON, when it's been... Um, Serialized, but it's going to, I think it's going to look something like that. And I'm okay with hard coding strings here. Uh, need a semicolon. Because even though JSON, like technically the JSON serialization format might come out differently. In this case, like it's so un deeply unlikely to do so. I don't think it's a worry. Okay. We need to unwrap that. Okay. So. Um, I guess we've got a problem here that we need to do some kind of async work here. Um, well, no, what if we send, if we send down this um, transmitter before we call handle outgoing, but after we've subscribed, the message will be ready for handle outgoing as soon as it it runs. So we won't have to worry about waiting for it to process it later, which technically, because there's an await in here, 
um, no, no, not because there's no weight in here, but because, like, there's no weight in this line. So it's it's we're putting something into the channel, and then we need to somehow say do some async stuff in order for it to get processed. So by just putting it in there earlier, we avoid that problem at least for now. We might come back to it. So let's let's describe this. So I, I often use given when then. So given. Um, Uh, I mean, I guess, I guess it's given a, a channel, um, when we send a message down the channel and handle messages, then, um, the message is serialized into the channel. Serialized into the stream, let's say. Okay, so this test should fail if we're, if we're lucky. It did. It failed because we hit a not yet implemented um, on Line 74. Yeah, so we didn't actually do it. So let's try and do it. So what this method does is takes in, like it receives, it, it receives messages over the receiver and it writes them to the writer. So let's do that. So the receiving over the receiver has already been given to us. So now we need to do the writing. So TCP write. I tell you what, I've missed out. I, it's supposed to come with a new line attached to it. So let's just make that correct now. Um, before I write the code and do it wrong. Okay, so let's write something in here. So we can actually just call write and give it um, the serialized message. Let's call that serial message since we're abbreviating things, it seems. Um, now, serial message is going to be um, the result of JSON, dirty JSON, like deserializing into JSON, um, to, str to vec. Hang on, what is it going to be? Yeah, we need, so, yeah, yeah. So basically, write takes in a vec of U8 or a slice of U8, um, because it's just bytes. So we need to ask the Surdy JSON thing to turn our message into bytes. Normally we would turn it into a string, or normally I would be looking to turn it into a string. Um, but in this case we want two vec, which really means two a vec of bytes. Um, and we'll unwrap that, I guess. So again, we should probably be thinking a little bit more about error handling. Um, what um, what, what, what does it mean if this fails to serialize? It means that somehow we've made a mistake in our code that means messages can't be serialized into JSON, which seems unlikely, so I think I'm okay unwrapping. Um, oh no, something, what is going on here? So, I guess we want to, want to say, can we just say that W should be unpin as well? And then we should be fine. Yeah, so that was a slightly mysterious error message. Basically, because I changed to this being generic, um, before it was just a concrete like TCP um, right half. Uh, and so we didn't have a problem. Now we seem to have a problem because um, right requires this thing to be pin, which is something that we probably shouldn't think about too much. Um, but I'm pretty sure we're not going to be using any kind of stream that 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 is not unpin that the i that has like self references in it that can't therefore can't be moved around. So I think just saying oh it should be unpin and trying not to worry about it is fine. Now it's complaining that we need to await it and we probably also need to unwrap it. Yeah, so what went wrong if we were 
uh, like this unwrap here. So we obviously we await write because it's an asynchronous call. Then we're unwrapping here to say writing into the stream failed. So this should definitely be handled. So let's make this be an expect. We won't actually handle it, but we'll at least say failed to write to stream. Now this won't happen in our tests, but it, it could happen somewhere else. Um, and now our test should fail because we forgot the new line. So let's see. No, our test is freezing. Probably because we forgot the new line, maybe? Or because we never flushed? What happens if we... What's our test doing? It's, look, it's waiting for... It's... Yeah, I guess... Oh, handle outgoing never exits, right? So, um, because it, there, there might be more stuff coming down the stream. So I guess what we need to do is close the stream, uh, the channel rather. Um, we can, I guess we can just drop receiver. Will that work? No. Um, when does this stop? When does this stop? It stops when we get a none through the channel or an error. So yeah, let's see if we can somehow drop the transmitter or tell the transmitter to maybe if we, let's try dropping transmitter, see what happens. That's no good. Can we kind of tell it to stop? Oh, this is why I shouldn't have got into writing tests. Why does dropping a transmitter not work here? Are there more transmitters out there? No, we've only made this transmitter. Um... Dropping the receiver is no good because we've already given the receiver to handle outgoing. And we don't want to drop it. We want it to, we want the next method to return. Um, to return none, basically, is what we want. So how do we tell the receiver? I guess maybe like this stream business is making our life a bit more difficult. Not sure. Um, let's just briefly, just in case this is it, let's try not using a stream. And instead we'll do while let something equal. Now we're just going to say the receiver now has got a receive method on it. Um, something like this, maybe? What does receive return? Need to await it. Not sure what the stream was buying us here, if this does work. Um, we'll call it mutable. Yeah, I really wonder what, what, what the receiver was giving us. Yeah, and it, this returns an error when all the sender halves have been dropped. So now, hopefully, our test should end because we dropped the sender half, right? That's kind of making me think the other thing would have been fine too because it's somehow, somehow I'm not dropping what I thought I was dropping or something. So let's try and think it through. We make a transmitter. We subscribe to it. We send on it. And then we drop it. Well, let's try, let's remove handle outgoing completely and check that this test runs. Yeah, it runs to the end and obviously fails. So we are freezing up at handle outgoing. Um, and handle outgoing continues looping until receiver returns an error. And the receiver should return an error when all the sender halves have dropped. Uh, 
and otherwise it should just keep doing, it should churn through them until they're dropped. So, I mean, we could try dropping transmitter before, oh yeah, okay, it's the same problem I was talking about before, I think. Will this work? This works. Okay, brilliant. We got there. So, it's exactly the same problem that I, w I anticipated before, which I now forgot, which is that handle outgoing will, um, will finish, but only when transmitter's been dropped. And we were trying to drop the transmitter after we'd, um, after after handle up going had finished, so this wasn't going to work. So I guess we could we could create some kind of async task in which um, transmitter gets dropped, and then and then hopefully handle handle outgoing would then definitely finish at some point. Um, yeah, that would probably work. But yeah, the point is we have to launch that task or just actually drop the transmitter, which works which works for us here before we start waiting for handle outgoing to finish. Um, yeah, so this is fine. This will work. Maybe there's a nicer way of doing this, like um, passing passing transmitter off to some function which both sends and deletes it. But I think this is fine. Okay, so now we send a message. Um, we call handle outgoing, which is what we're actually trying to test. So let's just say given a channel with a waiting message, and then it's going to look a little bit less illogical, with a waiting message, um, when we handle the messages, when we handle the waiting messages, then the message is serialized into the string. Right, so we run it. It fails because we forgot the new line. So that's good that I put that in the test. Because now we can fix the bug here without me as um, forgetting about it. I think the thing to do is just um, send new line. Uh, I think there's a two bytes or as bytes, as bytes, like so. We could probably write a single char. Um, right, uh, but I'd have to like, I don't even want to get into that. Like, is it a U8? Does this work? Is that okay? Doesn't seem to be. So I'd have to do some kind of conversion. Does that work? Let's try it. Is it better than what I had before? Uh, now we've got a backslash problem. <laughs> um, oh, I see. I think I've done the test wrong because this is an actual backslash and an actual N, I think. Because this is a raw string. Is that right? Um, in which case, let's just check whether that is right by just escaping all of our quotes here. Yeah, yeah, okay, it was. Okay, so I don't like that very much, but the we need the we need the backslash n in there, so this is probably the nicest way of writing. I'm not sure how to insert a new line into a raw string. I guess I'd have to just press enter in the middle of it, which I wouldn't I don't like that. So fine. Um Alright, so let's go back to streams now, just because that's how they wrote it, and I think it makes no difference to us. It doesn't I don't see what we're buying from it. Um, no, it doesn't. For some reason, it means this doesn't need to be mutable, which I don't get either. But we, our code all still passes and runs. So basically, we've, we've implemented handle in outgoing the way we, we think we were supposed to, which is that when we get given a message, we send it to down the TCP channel. Um, and furthermore, in a sneaky, um, uh, bit of sneaking, I've also discovered what the uh, correct format for a user message is. So now I can handcraft those things to do some more manual testing of incoming messages, which I, I was thinking we would do in a bit. So 
Um, can we do the same kind of testing we've done on this outgoing thing? I think that's probably, that test is probably good enough for handle outgoing. Handle outgoing is really quite simple as, as far as I can understand it so far. Um, but can we do the same kind of testing for handle incoming? We need an async read, I presume, and then a transmitter. And we're basically saying when you read in this message, this stuff should get sent down the transmitter. So I guess we can. So let's try it. So this would be a reader, async, read. And this thing would be just of that type. And well, OK, it needs to be async read plus unpin. Again, like we had before, not going to worry too much about that. Um, now we can write a little unit test for this as well. So let's uh, give it a go. Um, we'll need to think how we're going to actually test this because when we um, receive a user and message, it is sent to the channel, something like that. And then it's going to have to be, we're going to need a something that's an async read, which I guess we could do with some kind of string-like thing. So let's make a string first off and see if that works. We might need to call lines on it or something. I'm not sure what, okay, there's, maybe a string's good enough. We'll see, we'll see. Okay, so let, um, let's call it read equal a string. And that string is going to contain a user. And it's all right, because we now know what a user looks like, right? It's going to be exactly this stuff. And it's also going to have another line in it, which is going to be a message. And I, I can guess from this format what a message is going to look like. It's going to look like client message. Client message. And let's just say hi, shall we? So we've got a string, and I'm hoping a string is going to be allowable to pass in. So let's call handle incoming, pass in read, and pass in tx, which is going to be some kind of transmitter. We better await it and unwrap it. And transmitter is presumably going to be one of these things. And I guess we're going to like read stuff from transmitter after we've done it. So. All right, so what it's saying is that string is not an async read, but um, a slice of, UT, of U8 is. So we can just, um, we can just say as bytes maybe to get ourselves a slice of UTF-8. Um, What is it complaining about? Uh, transmitter is not the right type I think it's complaining about. So let's just try and make it clear that what the, the transmitter is the right type by doing something like um, Oh, hang on. The point is we're not actually listening. So we need to we need to listen to this, don't we? So. I guess is going to we're going to need to something something listening to our transmitter and then we're going to read from it um, receive from it um, and this is going to be 
I guess it's going to be a message. We're going to receive from the receiver. We'll probably need to unwrap it, right? Um, we're going to have to ask the compiler to give us that thing. And then once we've got that message, we want to check that it is a, it should be a chat message, right? So it should be message, chat, something. I'm guessing we need to import message. And this needs stuff in. So it's going to be a message from the user called Alice. And the content of the message is going to be hi. And those are probably both strings, are they? So they need to be dot two ended. Like so. So now we get to the bit that's confusing us. And what is it? What is it really saying? Let's read the error message in slightly more expanded form. Load of warnings. Load of warnings. Load of warnings. Um, the trait as ref broadcast sender of message is not implemented for sender. Um, I think it's probably because this underscore is not the same as message. So maybe we just need to be explicit about it, the type here. And say that this is a... Um, sender... of messages. Can we put an underscore there? I don't know. So this should be broadcast sender, I guess. Do we need to pass in a reference to it? So when we call handle incoming, what do we do? What do we do here? We just pass in TCP read. Oh, 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 oh. Have I got the, the, the wrong way around? Yeah. No? I'm looking, at, I should have considered it. Uh, yeah, that's, this is the thing I'm worried about. Is it that this is not an async function or something? No, no, it is, it is, because a way to still the right thing there. What am I doing wrong? Could it be that actually it's the bytes that's the problem here? Read is a slice of U8, and I think we established that a slice of U8 is a sync read. So, something... Let's just have another look. I'm just probably just confused. Oh, look, it's wrapped up in an arc. And that's what we're not doing. We need to do that. Because it's something that can be referred to as a, um, uh, it's, it's an as ref, uh, uh, sender. So we probably don't need this declaration here. Um, so an, and an arc is something that, that can be viewed as a reference to a sender, whereas an actual sender is not something that can be viewed as a reference to a sender. So I'm slightly surprised that the, just putting an ampersand before it didn't work, but we'll see. Okay. Okay. So messages can't actually be compared. I think that's bad. So let's, let's allow messages to be compared like that, like so. Right, so where have we got to? 
Alright, should be mutable. Oh, I undid that by mistake. So what is what are we saying now? Given a user and message are queued in the um, in the stream in a stream, an incoming stream, incoming stream. When we handle the messages in the stream, then a chat message was added to the channel. Okay. I'm pretty sure that's the correct behavior, right? If you say user and then you say client message blah, then it should send a chat message to everyone in the channel. So when we run this, it, it compiles and it fails because we haven't implemented any of this code yet. So let's go to line 50 where we went wrong and figure out what's going on. So first of all, we do already pull the first line out and but what we don't do is convert it into a message. So let's say let's call, let's still call it initial message, but we're converting it now from stra from well, what is it? What is it? Is it a stra? Yeah, it's a string, like so. And now that's going to be, so if something goes wrong with that, for now, we're just going to bail out saying, um, fail to pass um, incoming line. Now we would obviously have to deal with that in some better way, because what we, what I found out when I was investigating this earlier is that this doesn't even drop so this should be a message. Um, this doesn't even drop the connection if something goes wrong here. It just kind of leaves it hanging, so we'll see. All right. Um, so we've passed a message or failed, but now it's not just any type of message we want. It's only if it's a, a user message that we're actually even okay. So we're going to say let... Um, What we're going to do is we do a let else. So we're going to say user. We're going to basically either set up a variable called user or it's all going to go wrong by doing this, otherwise this. So either we extract the user out of initial message because it's of type message user or we bail out. And let's, let's panic so that we're being consistent Um, with this line above where we're also panicking because we couldn't pass it. Now we're going to f panic saying um, uh, initial message was not was not a user. And yeah, so we don't like the fact that we're panicking here and here, but at least we're doing the same thing each time. So it says stop this task. So I guess um, panicking is a way of stopping the task, so fair enough. What it doesn't do, as I said, is drop the connection, which is really nice. So we've pulled in the user, so we can get rid of that. Now, for every other line, we've got various other jobs we can do. And to make our test pass, we probably only need to do one. So we're going to loop through all the next rest of the lines. So we're going to do while let some message equals TCP read next line. Ah, oh, now we're actually returning result here. So can we do better than these panics? 
What type? What is what is results? Um, okay, it's some kind of anyhow thing that makes life easy. So what if we just question mark this? Would that be allowed? It would. All right. So let's do that here too. So we're going to return an error, and maybe we can just return an error with, say, a string inside it or something. Does that work? Um, what about if we did some kind of into? No. So I guess we want some kind of anyhow. Probably anyhow has got. Oh yeah, probably we can just do this, right? There's some kind of macro that anyhow says just make me an error. Yeah, there we go. That seems good. So for every message that we receive, um, parse it. So that's going to look similar to this. If we fail to pass, we'll just bail out again, I guess. It's probably fine. Basically, if this client sends us some invalid JSON, we stop talking to this client. It seems okay. So this is just going to be called message. Um, DT underscore, yeah. yeah. So I, was looking for, oh, I didn't even want that. I wanted DF underscore. Anyway, sorry. <laughs> oh, we can practice here. DF underscore. There we go. A little bit of vim for you. Um, all right, so we parse out the message, and then, all right, so we've done that part. Now, if it's a user message, well, we won't handle that case yet. We'll only handle a case or that we've written a test for. It's not called switch. Where did switch come from? Uh, we want to match on uh, the type of message. And we're not going to handle users, we're not going to handle chat, we're only going to handle client message because we've got a test for it. And so this is going to be message. Oh, it's calling it message again, is that really? Let's call it client message just to make disambiguate it slightly. And what we have to do is send something to the transmitter. Um, Uh, well, it's an as ref broadcast sender, so we need to dereference it. I mean, I feel like I ought to be able to just call send on this, um, and it's gonna we're gonna send a chat message, is what we said. Well, the user is user, and the content is client message. So we could we could make this nicer by calling this content. How about renaming that? And now this line looks nice because it just says user comma content here. All right, so we can't actually send to that because we need to somehow um, dereference it first. Is it that? And obviously we've got some errors and stuff we need to handle. All right, so user is getting, all right, so I guess we need to clone user because we might need to use it next time around the loop. Um, but we've still got problems here. Oh yeah, we have to, you know, if we're going to do that, we have to say user kind of user.clone. Now that uh, sending has the possibility to fail, so what if we just question mark in here? Again, if we fail, we just stop talking to this client, which is probably fair enough. Now, what is it warning us about? It's very confused. These are just unused variables. All right, so we can ignore all of that, see whether our test passes. Will our test pass? No, because we've got a bunch of to-dos in here. So, first is used to broadcast it, so that's still a to-do. We can put it in the right place, right? Like so. 
And if it's a client message, convert it to message chat and broadcast it. We've done that, we think. And if it's a chat, ignore it. So we'll just um, put that to do in the right place as well. I don't know why it's formatting it so horrifically. I think it must be sad about something. So we'll make the formatting not quite so awful and then hope that we get some kind of test result. Okay, so our test passed. So that's really good. So it does seem to be doing what we uh, was hoping it would do. So actually, I think it might be time for us to run our code. Um, or should we fill in the rest first? No, let's run our code because this, this is basically the key functionality is done already. So let's write. So now we, we're running a server and it's listing on port 8000 of 127.0.0.1. So I prepared earlier netcat command to talk to that port. And now we're going to do, we're going to send some JSON, which is why I had to look at what the uh, right JSON was. We're going to send a user. And it should... So, oh, it says connection established, so it's done doing something, but that may have happened before. And then we've got client message. Um, well, we can have a space. Hi, um, viewers. And we send that to. And look, it broadcast back out to everyone, including me, that the user called Andy sent a message saying hi viewers so it's kind of working already but let's be really brave and connect to it again so i'm going to another terminal that was this terminal going to this terminal connect again and i'll i'll send a message about another user called bob and well let's send something else from here shall we first of all we can say hi bob i guess don't make a typo in the JSON or everything breaks. All right, so Andy said, hi, Bob. But what did Bob see? Well, Bob also saw that Andy said, hi, Bob. So now let's send another message. It's about it right or everything breaks. Um, and this could be, oh, this could be, um, hello, Andy, shouting. Like so. All right, so Bob said, hello, Andy. And look, Andy sees the Bob said hello, Andy. So it's basically working. So um, hopefully you followed how we implemented that because we've done it. So let's just try breaking stuff by saying something isn't valid, Jason. What happens? Well, what happens is nothing at all. Um, no errors are printed anywhere. That's bad, isn't it? Um, but now if we try and send something valid, um, I think nothing will happen, right? Yeah. So basically, it just completely drops our connection. or well, doesn't drop it. It stops listening and doesn't close the connection. So net, poor old Netcat thinks everything's fine, and it's really not. So that's sad. But we're not going to fix that because this is quite complicated enough already. All right, so we've got a little bit more functionality to do, and we need a couple of unit tests to cover it, I guess. The easy one is... Um, well, I guess the case we haven't covered already is that um, if they if we send something that isn't a user first. So let's try that, shall we? Um, so when we receive a non-user, when the first message, when the first message message is a non-user. Um, I mean, we would say, like, it is a uh, uh, return error. I guess the point is, when we return an error in that um, handling code, we could somehow close the TCP stream at that point. That would be good to do, but we're not going to do it. All right, so given a non-user message is cute. So we may as well just use this client message. Um, when we handle the income messages in the stream, 
um, let's just say that the result be that, then um, we get an error. So we're just going to assert that res is an error. I think that's probably good enough. What happens when we, oh, that's, uh, yeah, okay, the receiver didn't need to be mutable. We don't need a receiver at all. Maybe. Let's try. And that test already passes, which is slightly stressful, but look. I was pretty confident it was going to pass, so we're okay with that. All right, so what else? Well, there's a few other error cases that I, I can't be bothered to cover. Um, so let us do, what if you send a user message later? Then it should just get kind of echoed out. I'm not sure why you want this, but I guess maybe there's some more information about these and you want to send it to the other people or something. But let's just follow the, the spec they've given us, shall we? So what we're going to call this when we receive a, a user later, then we broadcast it. So given a user and another user. I guess it could be a different user. I'm not sure what this means. Maybe it's just, um, maybe I'm missing that it's obvious. Um, but let's say Chloe gets sent through after Alice. I don't know whether we're expecting the same user or a different user. Um, then the user message Uh, and let's just say that's sort of unmodified. So this is going to be a user, um, which it just means we just put like Chloe in here. You still need our dot two two owned in there. All right, so this test should fail, which is good because we hit a to-do. So let's do our to-do, which is, if we were given a user, I mean, let's just say, uh, let's call it uh, extra user or something, just to distinguish it from user. What we're gonna do is, Oh yeah, I was forgetting that as ref means there is a method on here which gets me a reference to the sender. It doesn't mean that you can just treat it as a reference or sender. Um, we're going to send a message user extra user. Pretty sure that's the right behavior. Oh, yeah, I guess we better question mark it, call it. Oh, we've already got curly brackets, we don't need the comma, okay. But we do need a semicolon. Okay, will our test pass now? Yes, it will. All right, last last test to write. When we send a chat message, it's not, absolutely nothing should happen. So, I guess we should now have when, yeah, now when we receive a chat message, it is ignored, or we ignore it, I guess, but given a user and a chat message are queued. Now we would want more tests here, like, um, uh, like multiple messages and things like that, which we just tested manually, so I think we're probably okay with it. But yeah, we, we definitely want um, a bit more um, for realsies. So what is, uh, it's user colon, content colon. Yeah, 
Here's a Chloe. Content. I am me. And view are you, are you. Now, how are we going to lay this out? This is getting messy. Let's go for something like this. Oh, look, we're missing backslash n on a lot of these. Um, strings, which is not good. We're getting away with it, but we're definitely missing new lines here. And so really, we'd be within our rights to ignore these messages. I think, because they're not full lines without a new line at the end. But it's reasonable also for us to do what we're doing. And I guess the lines function is just giving us that behavior for free. All right, so now Chloe says, I am me. Um, and somehow that's got that's hit our server when actually that's a message that's directed towards a client. Um, then we should uh, not take a typing break. Then what should happen? Then nothing should be added to the channel. Then nothing should have been added to the channel. So I guess we want to say the message should be none. No, it should be an error, shouldn't it? It should be the receive error closed. Reserve error closed. Import that from. I'm pretty sure it's all broadcast, so it should work. All right, and that test should fail because we haven't implemented it. Yep, we got we here to do saying not implemented, and instead of. To doing, we should be doing nothing. In fact, what we can do here is just dot dot in here to say we don't care about any of the stuff in there. Just do nothing. Okay, is that right? Oh, okay, I was beginning to doubt myself as to whether this closed was the right right thing, but I guess it was because um, handle incoming is closing. When does this return closed? When all sender halves have dropped. Okay, so I guess tra the transaction has been dropped. Yeah, I guess it got passed into handle incoming, right? The only the only reference to it was this one arc. It got passed into handle incoming, dropped at the end. So if we clone it here, then it won't have been dropped. And our test will fail or freeze or something. Yeah, it freezes. Yeah, okay. All right, so there's a slightly subtle behavior going on there, which is that the transmitter is actually getting deleted um, at the end of getting dropped at the end of handle incoming. Uh, that's why the receiver thinks we've finished, which in this case is good, right? So that's fine. All right. Oh, we've got all our tests passing. We've got a few warnings, so let's get rid of our warnings and think about whether we're happy with um, our code as it is. Any more warnings? Where are the other warnings? They're in the client. Okay, we can ignore, definitely ignore the warnings in the client for now. We haven't done any client stuff. It's all in the client. Okay, so I, I we tried it out. It works. We've written some tests. They pass. The tests seem reasonable. So I think we've done. So essentially what we did was, 
Um, when we received a message over the broadcast channel, we wrote it out in a very straightforward way. And when we received um, a message over our stream, we processed it, thinking, in, assuming the first message that we get is definitely going to be the user, um, otherwise fail. Now we've got hold of the user, we're expecting to get more client messages mostly. When we get client messages, we convert them into these chat messages, which have both the username and the content, because the username we collected at the beginning. We also pass on user messages unmodified, and we ignore chat messages, because they should be sent to the client. All right, so um, I think that'll do us for mess uh, exercise 2A. Next time, we'll go on to do exercise 2B and implement a client, and then we ought to have um, a pretty robust way of um, talking to each other instead of type manually typing JSON into Netcat like I was doing this time. I uh, hope you enjoyed. See you next time.